Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to discuss in detail about Akanthamoeba keratitis. Akanthamoeba is an ubiquitous free-living protozoa. It is isolated from soil, dust, sea and fresh and chlorinated water. It is capable of encystment in unfavorable conditions and so it can survive extremes of temperature, desiccation and pH. Akanthamoeba keratitis as such is rare. However, its incidence is rising with increasing contact lens use and the recent epidemic. Half the patients require more than 6 months of treatment and severe vision loss or blindness occurs in 25% of cases of Akanthamoeba keratitis. So, it is a serious form of keratitis. It is largely resistant to normal first-line broad-spectrum antibiotics and late diagnosis of Akanthamoeba keratitis can lead to irrevocable corneal scarring. Coming to the risk factors for Akanthamoeba keratitis, the main risk factor is contact lens wear, especially extended wear contact lens, poor contact lens hygiene that is rinsing in tap water or after swimming with contact lens in situ, especially in ponds, hot tubs and swimming pools. The second risk factor is corneal trauma, especially in rural or agricultural settings. Coming to the clinical features of Akanthamoeba keratitis, the symptoms are highly variable. It can range from asymptomatic cases to foreign body sensation, reduced visual acuity or tearing to severe pain. The pain is often disproportionate to the clinical findings. That is, the clinical findings will be mild. However, the pain will be severe. Akanthamoeba keratitis may occasionally be bilateral. Other clinical features include epithelial ridges, pseudo and true dendrites. So, all dendritic ulcers in contact lens virus should be assumed to have Akanthamoeba until proven otherwise. This is to avoid misdiagnosis of therapist simplex keratitis. Other clinical features include stromal infiltrates which may progress circumferentially to form a ring as you can see in this picture. This is a case of Akanthamoeba keratitis. There can be perineural infiltrates and reduced corneal sensation. Coming to the complications of Akanthamoeba keratitis, if not treated adequately, there can be limbal and scleral extension, corneal perforation and intractable scleritis. Coming to the investigations done for a case of Akanthamoeba keratitis, if in vivo confocal microscopy is available, direct visualization of cysts is diagnostic. Early and adequate corneal scraping should be done. We have to send additional samples for DNA detection that is polymerase chain reaction, culture and histology fixed in 10% formalin. If patient wears contact lens, we have to send the lenses, solutions and cases for culture. The stains used for diagnosing Akanthamoeba are gram stain which stains the organisms, Gemsa stain which stains the organism and cysts, calcofluor white stain which stains cysts visualized under UV light. Culture should be done in non-nutrient agar with E. coli overlay at 25 degrees Celsius and 37 degrees Celsius and growth may require up to 14 days. If strong clinical suspicion but negative investigations, we have to consider corneal biopsy for culture together with light and electron microscopy of Akanthamoeba cysts. This picture shows a case of Akanthamoeba keratitis and this is the double walled Akanthamoeba cyst. Coming to the treatment of Akanthamoeba keratitis, the initial treatment is to admit the patient and stop contact lens wear. We have to start the patient on intensive topical anti-amoebic drugs that is bigoanide like polyhexamethylene bigoanide that is PHMB 0.02% or chlorhexidine 0.02% plus aromatic diamidine. Examples include propamidine isetionate 0.1% or hexamidine 0.1% administered orally. Aminoglycosides or imidazoles like oral itraconazole or fluconazole may give additional benefit. Topical adenine cyclase inhibitor that is beta blocker can be given to drive resistant cysts into a susceptible protozoal state. Oral analgesia and cyclopegia should also be given for the pain. Now let us discuss about the maintenance treatment of Akanthamoeba keratitis. We have to taper treatment according to clinical improvement. Relapse is common and it may signify incomplete sterilization of active Akanthamoeba trophozoids or reactivation of resistant intrastomal cysts. Treatment is usually prolonged between 20 weeks to 40 weeks. We have to consider cautious use of 
topical steroids while continuing anti-amoebic agents to reduce corneal scarring. Now let us discuss the treatment of complications of acanthamoeba keratitis. Scleritis has a poor prognosis and it is treated by immunosuppression with systemic steroids and a steroid sparing agent like cyclosporin. If there is severe corneal scarring, we can do penetrating keratoplasty once treatment is completed and cornea is sterile. However, residual infection may recur in fresh uninfected tissues. If there is extensive necrosis, we have to do emergency penetrating keratoplasty. However, there is high risk of persistent or recurrent disease in grafted tissue. For severe intractable pain, rarely enucleation may be required. Coming to the prevention, we have to educate contact lens wearers appropriately. This is because a known avoidable and predisposing practice is easily identified in more than 90% of cases of Akantabiba keratitis. So, education of patients is key in preventing Akantabiba keratitis. A short note about anti-amoebic drugs. Aminoglycosides prevent protein synthesis and examples include neomycin, paromomycin. Aromatic diamidins inhibit DNA synthesis and examples include propamidin, isotoyanate and hexamidin. Biguanates inhibit function of membrane and examples include PHMB and chlorhexidine. Imidazoles destabilize cell wall and examples include clotrimazole, fluconazole and ketognosoles. These are the various anti-amoebic agents available. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments section. For more such videos, please check out my playlists. Thank you.